So we've talked about what fasting is. We've talked about different types of fasting. Uh, we've talked about a few other things in our first three videos. This is our fourth video. And what I want to do is talk about what to expect when you go on a fast. You've decided to take a fast. You have picked your beginning day, your start time. You've selected an end time so you know how long the fast is going to go. You have uh, chosen what kind of fast to go on, a full fast, a partial fast, whatever it is you're, you're doing. You're excited about the spiritual journey that you're about to go on. Let's talk about some of the things that will happen to your body and even your spirit as uh, you go on this journey over the next few days. There are some side effects to fasting that you may or may not expect, especially on a multiple day fast. Uh, and it kind of, it, it, it changes as the fast goes on. And uh, 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 let, let's talk about some of that. It, it, it won't change whether you do it or not, but it's just good to know what you're heading into. Uh, if you're doing a food, uh, an all, a full fast, where maybe you're drinking things, but you're not eating food, whether it's 24 hours, or 24 days, however long you're fasting, there's things to expect. Uh, hunger pains. Now that's obvious. You might think, well, of course I'm going to be hungry. Matter of fact, often people say, oh, I can never fast very long because I'll just be too hungry. I just can't make it. Um, here's the deal. You're going to think there are hunger pains. Generally, they're, they're really not. Chances are what this really is, is your stomach just yelling at you saying, hey, I'm used to having food in me. What's wrong with you? Uh, feed me. Uh, it's, 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 at least here in America, we have so much food that, that most of us are not starving. All right, most that's, that's just not an issue for most of us. Um, chances are we're used to being overfed and, and our stomachs are whining that we're not still being overfed. We're wondering where the normal food is. And uh, th th trust me, those pains will pass. All right, you think you're starving, that's not what they are. They're just aggravated. Your stomach's aggravated with you. So what I do when I have those, those feelings of, oh boy, I'm hungry, I will use that as a motivation, as a reminder to pray. Oh, I felt a little, uh, we'll call it hunger pain because that's what we think they are. I felt a hunger pain, uh, it's time for me to pray. It just reminds me to pray. Uh, so every time you do that, pray. I pray for things like, boy, I'm really, uh, and you'll have strange cravings right? Uh, I'll crave the strangest things when I fast. I suddenly need to have popcorn. You know, I suddenly need to have, I don't know, potatoes. I'm like, what? What? You know, I, you know, I just crave things. So, or I, I need a ribeye steak. That's, that's what I need to have. And so if I start craving something, I, I will, as part of my prayers, I say, God, I, I, lo I love prime rib. I mean, you know I love prime rib. I'm thinking about prime rib right now. Um, am I, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'd love to have a prime rib, but I love you more. Or I love what I'm praying about more. I often pray and fast for my children. Uh, as much as I want to have a prime rib, Lord, I, am, I want more for the success of my children spiritually. I want them to know you and to love you. <clears throat> I want you to surround them with people who know you and love you so they can understand the real community of a church and, and you know, things like that. I'll use my craving or my hunger pain as a motivation and a reminder to pray. See, otherwise, we, uh, when you're not fasting, you just don't think about it. You may not think to pray that, but you do, you're reminded when you're fasting. Uh, for longer fasts, maybe you're going to go several days. This is something you'll work up to someday, but, but you also need to know. Uh, you need to know the first three days are the most difficult. Uh, that's when you're going to feel uh, those hunger pains the most. The physical discomfort is, is, you know, again, you're used to eating, you have habits, and your body's used to it. Uh, so there's a physical discomfort. Uh, the body is also burning up toxins. You have had years of, of probably eating things that aren't all that healthy and all that good for you, and there's toxins in your body, and the fast is burning those things up. It's, it's consuming them, getting rid of them. It, it's, it's just cleaning it all out, and it's not all that comfortable. Part of that, you'll have a coating on your tongue. All right, uh, I can't remember if one day does it or not, but by two or three days, you'll have this strange coat and you're like, uh, you, you feel like you wanna take a washcloth or something to your, your tongue. It's just part of the toxins being released. You'll have bad breath. Uh, when I fast, I tend to carry gum, just for that very reason, uh, because that way you can just mask the, the bad breath, the thing. You can brush your teeth all day long. That's, that's not your teeth. It's the toxins uh, burning down. You may experience headaches, especially if you're used to a lot of caffeine and you've cut that out. Just, just be prepared for that. 
Here's the good news. By the fourth day, that this doesn't make sense to people. If you've never done it, you're going to fight me on this. But trust me, by the fourth day, the pain is going to begin to go away. Uh, you may have some dizziness, some uh, maybe some feelings of, of weakness, but it's only temporary. That might be a day you take a little nap, take it a little bit easy. Uh, it's only temporary. Um, just move a little slower than normal. Here's the deal. By day six or seven, you'll actually begin to feel stronger and more alert. Uh, the hunger pains are going to continue to diminish. I know you think it's the opposite. It's going to actually diminish by, by the ninth or tenth day. It, it honestly is a minor irritation. You're, you're, I mean, it's just not, you, you've just kind of moved beyond it. You're, it's just not a deal, right? You, you, you burned out all the junk and, and you're just living off of your body. You've eliminated the toxins. You're actually going to feel really good. Your concentration is going to be sharper. Uh, you're going to feel as if you can fast forever. Uh, I mean, you're just not struggling with it. It's actually the best time of the fast. Now, anywhere between days 21 to 40, <laughs> all right? So, so it's a big range here, and it's going to be different for everybody. It depends on how much baggage you have to burn. I have plenty of baggage to burn, so, so you know, I can go longer probably. But at some point, you're going to feel hunger pains again. Uh, it's time to end the fast. Even if you said, well, I got nine more days. You know, it, those are, that's legitimate starvation. Your body's starting to break down a little bit. It's time to go ahead and, and eat again. And an extended fast should always be broken with things like fruit and vegetables, maybe some juice, uh, some very light foods. Give yourself a couple days to work back into it. You, you've not been eating for quite a while and you don't want to be too rough on your body. Trust me, I have friends who have gone to like a buffet after a long fast and they spent a good deal of the next few hours in a restroom because their body said uh, no no so so go light go light after a long a long fast other side effects um, the, the spiritual focus that's what you're doing this for anyway right I mean that but it is a great a great side effect it's a positive thing from this you're participating in something bigger than yourself you're giving up something for God and you're gonna find yourself just wanting to pray more you don't feel like, oh no, it's seven o'clock, I must pray. I mean, you want to pray. Your focus, your that 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 spiritual radar is on full blast, right? And you want to pray. You, you're viewing things through a more spiritual lens. You find yourself closer to seeing people how God sees them and, and loving them the way God loves them. And, and you're, you're starting to understand that in, in, in a better light. Uh, let me say, you cannot study the Bible enough to get to this place. Okay, this isn't a study issue. You can't uh, attend church enough times to finally get to this point where you're like, oh, I get this now. This is purely a prayer and, and fasting thing. Uh, on the negative end, this um, fasting tends to show cracks in your armor, your spiritual armor as well. Uh, you'll be hangry at times. Uh, you know, you're depriving yourself of something that you like a lot, food. You spend a lot of time eating. You spend a lot of time snacking. And you're going to get a little cranky or something. We in our family, a lot of people call it hangry. You're hungry and it just makes you angry and you just start lashing out at people. If you have a temper, you'll probably become angry quicker, at least the first few days. Uh, you may find yourself snapping at the kids or snapping at your spouse. You may become irritated at people at work. You may just plain be in a bad mood the first few days uh, when you fast, or even on just one 24-hour day. The first few years of our marriage, uh, when I told Cheryl, my wife, that I was going to go on a fast, she was just like, Ugh. Now, Now, I thought that I was a spiritual giant, and she just didn't get fasting like I did. She was not <laughs> nearly as spiritual as, as I am. Uh, that wasn't, however, the case. As it turned out, her lack of enthusiasm for my fasting uh, was because every time I fasted, she said I was a bear to be around. I took it out on her and, and, and the children. I snapped at her and the kids. I groaned at everything they wanted to do, and I'm not usually that way. I'm a pretty positive guy. I'm kind of a fun-loving guy, uh, kind of go-with-the-flow type of guy, but I'd come home and, you know, and I didn't even realize that. 
It wasn't until she pointed that out to me that, that, that she didn't like it when I fasted because of the way that I acted that I realized that, that I was being controlled by this side effect the first few years when I really started investigating and getting in, into fasting. And I, and I realized I needed to get this under control in my spiritual life or I would be missing the point entirely of fasting. <laughs> if my body groans when I'm going to go into a fast, if everybody I know groans like, oh no, he's going to fast again, I'm doing something wrong. So I was glad to get that information. So, so maybe you need to ask some people, hey, you know, do the first few times. How was I? Because uh, I didn't see it. I honestly didn't see it. And uh, so, so now when I go in the fast, I'm intentional about not being a jerk <laughs> because I don't want to be a jerk. It is, it is pretty selfish and arrogant of me to go on this great spiritual journey of fasting and make my family or my friends pay the price. So pay attention to your emotions. Don't whine, don't complain, don't think the whole world's against you. They're probably not. You just think they are. Keep your emotions in check. Keep your focus on, on God. Uh, you know, that was the biggest issue, or at least one of them, that Jesus had with the Pharisees when he confronted them uh, back when he was, you know, walking walking the earth. They, they would fast, and when they fasted, they made a big deal about it. They wanted everybody to know they were fasting, the way they dressed, the way they talked, the way they acted. And Jesus was like, it, don't do that. Don't do that. Just just keep that between us, you know, you and me, me and God, right? Just fast. And, and, and you gain the spiritual insight from it, but don't make other people pay for it. Ah, the whole purpose of fasting is, is to, uh, to focus on God. It's not about losing weight. It's not about having prayers answered. I mean, those are nice benefits, uh, but, but it's not the purpose uh, of fasting. And it, it's, it's not to get God to do things our way. It's more along the line of us getting to see things God's way and going his way. So if you've never fasted on a regular basis, I, I can't begin to tell you what a spiritual difference it will make in your life. I mean, don't just do it once a year or once whenever someone says, hey, you should fast, and you oh, I forgot about that. And put it into a routine, a rhythm into your life where you fast periodically. Pick a type of fast, full fast, partial fast. Pick a starting time. Pick an ending time for the fast. Pick a purpose for the fast and, and see what God does in your life. We're going to do one more video after this, and, and that video we're going to talk about some things to consider uh, before you begin. J just some, some thoughts, some random thoughts we're going to put together that's probably a good idea to hear that one last video before you get started, and then I'll, I'll give you some challenges in that last video.